Now that that's over, we can go save Tifa. So we'll head back to Madame Im's, get you changed, and then it's off to Corneo's. Right. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but you still have one fight left. What do you mean? The crowd loved your show a little too much. People are placing hefty bets, much heftier than you can possibly imagine. Corneo's going to milk this for as much as he can. Meaning what? You face and defeat Corneo's fighter of choice, and only then will you be declared winners of the tournament. Hey, that wasn't the deal! Don't you think I know that?! Ah! You greedy bastard! Scum-sucking piece of shit-festering asshole! Uh... <sighs> but that's the way it is. Corneo's the one who makes the rules around here. But if you win this match, Corneo will have to accept your victory. And the crowd will make sure he does. So this is the last one? I sure hope so. I ran out of swears. <laughs> At least one's allowed in a T-rated game. <laughs> Better take notes, see what I can get away with. Yeah. I don't know if T-rated games are like PG-13 ones where you can get away with like a single fuck without <laughs> getting an M, but I don't know. I mean, it'd be funny if it was uh, not per thing, but per length. Like, you can do uh, one fuck in a two-hour movie, but if it's a 40-hour game... <laughs> yeah, how does that change? You got a lot of fucks to play with. Wait a minute. Go on now. That prize money is going to pay for your dress. Better be a pretty good dress. It better be a, for a million gil. Pretty sure a million is enough to, like, start a business in this world. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we got even more, like, trophies and stuff out here. I've been working here a long time, but this has never happened before. It's gonna be one hell of a match. You better be ready for this one. Hey, you're, you're keeping the floral sector in business. That's yeah. good. These are the robots we beat up last time. Oh. Well then, you sure fixed my wagon. Do you two have any idea how much those mechs cost me? Sure, you got time to shoot the shit with me? Don't think you do. Is the whip just for for visuals, or do you actually use that? Only to swing across chasms. He <laughs> he has his honor. Watching you guys fight gave me goosebumps. Hope your next match is even better than the last. Ready to kick ass? It's not even about the money anymore, man. I just want you guys to win it all! Show them what you got! Tonight's Corneo Cup has been a spectacle like no other. And we shared your disappointment, ladies and gentlemen, when we told you that it was coming to an end. But nobody felt it more keenly than one time Corneo, who has decided that a bonus match is in order! <laughs> Participating in this match will be this evening's leading lights, the dynamic duo that has crushed all competition thus far, Cloud and Aaron! Cloud! Cloud! Over here! Look at them! They're so adorable! You're the man, Cloud! Aaron, I love you! Marry me! Their opponent! Buried in the bowels of the Colosseum. An unspeakable whore, long in prison, set free tonight for your entertainment! The secret star of Don Corneo's stellar stable! Enter the Hell House! Just a house. It's no ordinary house. The manifest 
manifestation of pure evil versus the most badass couple this side of Midgar. Have you ever seen a fight more incredible, more epic? You have not. No, sir, you have not. They'll be singing songs about tonight for generations to come. Keep your eyes glued to the action, ladies and gentlemen. The Cup's final, final battle begins now. All the battle All right, so Hellhouse, uh, it shoots rocket chairs at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, previous episode, there was that gift shop with, like, the really grody-looking stuffed animals. That's what it shoots out of its out of its windows, and they're like explosive mines, <laughs> and they make squeaky noise when they bounce around. Uh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Who will come out on top? Strap yourselves in, folks, because this show is only getting started. In the original yes, game, right. Hellhouse was just kind of a uncommon random encounter you could get in the collapsed highway segment before. Uh, you get to mm -hmm. Wall Market? Uh, on the way to Wall Market, yeah. yeah. Um, so when I played that part in the remake the first time, I was like, oh, damn, I guess there really wouldn't be any way to make a, a house in their work, but no, they just moved them. <laughs> yeah, Hell House is memorable just because what the fuck, I'm fighting a house, and also it was like the first random encounter enemy you would meet in the game that was actually like a little bit of trouble. It had a decent amount of health and it could actually kind of beat you up and didn't die in two hits. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, a lot of people, like, even years after they haven't played the game, go like, wait, didn't I fight a house <laughs> that was called Hell House? And it shot missiles at me? This place already has a bit of a housing crisis, and we're destroying the available homes? Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you what I can do. Big bad Eric <laughs> is pumping, and she is pumping. Hell House is actually a really difficult boss fight. <laughs> God house mode. Ooh. So Hell House cycles between different elemental weaknesses. Like before, its windows were on fire, so you would have to hit it with ice spells to uh, hurt it. When it jumps around, when it lands frequently, its windows, like the lights inside, turn off, and that means it's just weak to all magic in general for a brief period of time. There we go. It's got this hospitality mode where, or a uh, move where it will open up its door and suck somebody inside of it. Why don't you leave the way? But I'm glad I wasn't invited. When I think of somebody in a charming home offering hospitality, yeah, it does kind of feel like you're trapped. Yeah, you get psychic damage from uh, Cloud's anxiety. Oh no. So Hell House uh, takes almost no damage from physical attacks normally. Uh, it only takes like 10% damage. So you really got to focus on magic, and you really got to focus on being able to hit whatever elemental weakness it currently has. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason why it makes it hard, because if you come to this fight with little elements, like elemental magic, like that's kind of tough. But yeah, staggering it, Cloud has a new ability with this uh, weapon called uh, Infinity's End. It takes two, two gauge. It's a attack that with a really slow windup, but if you hit, it does a lot of damage, and it does even more damage if you're hitting an enemy that's staggered. I'd like to run, but nobody's home! What the Wait. Oh. <laughs> it's almost disappointing. No, not yet. Gentlemen, what the? I love the way it scrambles at you. <laughs> so right after this attack, there's a brief window where if you do a ton of damage to it, you can pressure it. I feel like this is something the home inspector should have said. Yeah. You think you'd be able to walk inside a house and tell that it's a robot? <laughs> oh, so I, I threw it an adrenaline on Aerith so she has fury, so her uh, limit break gauge will fill up faster. Because <laughs> again, we've got the refocus materia on her to give her a triple gauge. I've got to push myself further. And like, because this boss fight is so go. centered around being able to hit it with magic in time. Yeah, yeah. It's really good to use on her. You also, just so that we can throw Shiva out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Hey, Ice Lady. Grab your coats, folks. You're gonna wanna bundle up for this. We've got the Queen of Ice herself coming in for a meet greet. What a beauty. Koch and Scotch have a ton of dialogue, like commentary written for what you're doing during battle, including having intros for every summon in the game, <laughs> including ones you won't have until New Game Plus. I just love the idea of, you know, the guy with the angry dogs taking a look. I, I, I never had a chance. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? So, yeah, Hell House, also Robot House in the original. Uh, so it just popped God House mode. It's a mm -hmm. shield that makes it so that it takes 10% da uh, damage from attacks and magic, and its uh, stagger gauge barely fills up at all when it, that shield is up. Well, that's rude. That's just rude. This is what makes this fight really hard your first time, because there are brief moments in time where the God House mode shield goes down, and it has to go down when it does certain attacks. And those attacks are where you have a very small window to hit it with whatever element it's weak to. But uh, at the same time, it's like trying to hit you. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. A critical hit for six damage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so a good tip for this part, if you want to keep doing damage to it while its shield is up, uh, poison it. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a weird thing going on here. Like if you scan it, like it looks like a house. It looks like a house robot, but the the text for it kind of acts like it's somehow alive. So status mm -hmm. effects that would normally only work on living things work on it, including poison. Yeah, the shield can't reduce poison damage at all. And also, Shiva's got two different uh, moves. Both of them are very good at uh, increasing the stagger gauge. Summon's very hard to use in this fight because the shield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like here, it just put down its shield to do a lightning attack on me, and you have about five or six seconds to hit it with his weakness. <laughs> it's a really small window, man. We got uh, the Celerist I, I stole from Beck and those other gangsters. Uh, Throwing this on Aerith, that gives her haste, so on top of having a triple gauge, it also fills up extraordinarily fast. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, even in the second part of the fight, there, there are times where its shield will be down and it, the lights inside the house will be off, which means just hit it with any magic and you can fill its gauge up super fast. Also, when its shield is up, you can attack its arms instead. They also have, you know, reduced damage on them, but they have a very small amount of health, and if you can break one of the arms, its shield will go down for a little bit, and it'll be pressured. I, I just like checking out Ice Lady in the back, who seems so calm. I was gonna oh, say chill, chill, but I decided against it. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, that's like the pose she has anytime she pops up the game. She's always just like lounging in the air. <laughs> So here I got lucky in my first take. Shiva was able to pull off her ultimate attack while its shield was down. Uh -huh. But it can be really hard to have your summon do any damage because most of the time, the timer's gonna run out on the summon while its shield is up. There is a way to actually manually turn off that shield though. Ooh. Because Hell House is technically alive, you can put him to sleep. Uh -huh. And when you put him to sleep, his shield turns off. Hope you have sweet dreams. And so if you just don't attack it hard enough to wake it up, you can just like sit around and heal and prepare and wait for your summons timer to run out. Yeah, the Hell House has a countdown above its health bar right now. It's getting ready to do a really powerful attack. 
so it, it's flying, kind of. It's actually got one robot arm, like, on holding out to a rail that is pushing itself around <laughs> to look like it's flying. Switcheroo! As usual, the Hell House is up to no good! Hellbound, if you do not do enough damage to it to knock it down before it pulls it off, uh, it will just dive into one of your party members, and it's strong <laughs> enough to instantly kill a party member at full health. <laughs> So yeah, knock it down with, with some magic. showing an interest in someone. What will you do? <laughs> there you are. I've been looking for you two. So, Madam M wanted me to give you a message. She says you guys did pretty damn good, and that you should swing by her shop when you're done here. Got it? I was also hoping you might be interested in a few more matches here at the Coliseum. Big events like the Corneo Cup are pretty sporadic, but there's always action if you want to get a piece. There's always a Coliseum. There's always a Coliseum. <laughs> Tons of more optional fights in the Coliseum. We'll be doing all those because you get really good stuff from them. Um, the only question is how uh, they're going to add more Colosseums to the further chapters of the yeah. remake series. I can think of a couple couple ways. Make way for the curious, you could take on a soldier in Bing? Like I told you, no soldiers are showing up tonight. I know, I know. Why are you obsessed with soldiers? I love these people who throw in confetti when you come out. Mm hmm You're married now. Yeah. High fives are legally binding. Oh, man. That's how you get married in Midgar, huh? It's almost like a Klingon wedding. <laughs> yeah, you forgot the step where you recite poetry. Oh, right. There, there's that part, yeah. Congratulations on winning the tournament. You're an impressive fighter. I know that you'll be a great influence on my Johnny. Why, you might even end up having a friendly rivalry. You can spur each other to greater heights. I can see it. You two will become great friends. The best of friends. <laughs> I tell you, I'm exhausted from all the fun and excitement of that tournament. I'll look for my son tomorrow. For now, though, I really should get some rest. And what's rest without a little relaxation for the body, mind, and soul? Fortunately, I'm in the right place for that. Look, I barely know you. I barely even know your son. Don't tell me about you getting horny. <laughs> I don't need that. You know, sometimes you think your son is Sasuke when re he's really just the person reading the, the book. <laughs> Yeah, I really like that that Hell House fight, even if it can be a little frustrating your first go. It's just a fun thing to see, like such a to see a random encounter monster that gained infamy via the fan base years later get upgraded to a boss fight. <laughs> just because people just 
every, people always bring it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you're talking about Alex Final Fantasy being weird, you got to bring up Hell House. Chadley. Love you, Chadley. Um, so yeah, we got another materia here. Um, it's the ATB assist. So if you use the same ATB ability twice in a row, it'll cause the rest of your party's gauges to get boosted a little bit. Ooh. Yeah. Some really, uh, some really handy things you can do with that one. Also, just going back to Chocobo and Moogle with Aerith. We've only seen them once so far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gotta see Banjo and Kazooie at least once more. At least. I mean, this is basically a, a Smash Brothers prequel at this point. God, so Jesus yes. Christ, right. I, how did I forget about that? <laughs> yeah, this is the first episode we're recording after Sephiroth got announced as a new fighter for Smash Brothers. That's pretty fun. They somehow allowed, uh, they somehow approved the, the direction of having Mario appear to get impaled clean through by Sephiroth. So that's pretty fun. Then I invite you to ready your portable battle simulator. Don't even care I lost big. Chadley, let me play games on your phone. Yeah. Your fucked up face phone. I want to play Candy Crush. Anyways, it's time to fight a fat Chocobo. Hell yes. He's fat. He's big. Well, from what I know of similar media, I would expect this Chocobo to be in charge of the Chocobo Mafia. <laughs> uh... Fat Chocobo in Seven, at least, is a, a mythical uh, symbol of fertility and good fortune. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fat Chocobos appear in many a beloved fairy tale. <laughs> How many beloved fairy tales are about fertility? Wait mm. a minute. What are you telling your kids? Guy has got some weird fairy tales. Fat Chocobo is all physical attacks, so you can just cast a protect spell on yourself and have a much easier time. Also, Moogles just show up sometimes. Hey, buddy. How are you doing? So yeah, Moogles will throw bombs around that sometimes summon other enemies. The enemies they summon are very weak versions of enemies we can fight later on. Mm -hmm. it's your turn. Because this enemy it just summoned is a Tunberry, and if this were a real Tunberry, this would be an incredibly hard boss fight, because uh, Tunberries are usually late game enemies in Final Fantasy, and their whole gimmick is that they don't really attack much. They just walk very slowly towards you, and then once they get next to you, they just stab you and instantly kill you. <laughs> That's their whole deal. Uh, thankfully, this Tunberry doesn't do that. He just, like, pokes you with his little knife, and sometimes he shoots out, like, a ghost from his lantern that, like, Ooh. It, like, pins you so you can't attack for a little bit. What are you doing, big guy? Where are you going? Having fun. Rolling. Oh, okay. <laughs> Floppy. Try as, long, as long as he's having fun. Yeah. Uh, I have yet to get it myself. Oh, also, I put the uh, the magnify materia on the barrier thing, so now we can protect the whole party with one spell. That's pretty ah, handy. Handy, handy. Yeah, yeah. Cloud used uh, focus strike or focus thrust twice in a row, so Aerith got a little boost from that materia. Cloud has. Oh yeah, uh, I showed this move once before, but if you are uh, if you're in Cloud's Punisher mode and you hold down the attack button, so you stab the ground. That gives Cloud that Berserk status effect briefly, which increases mm -hmm. his attack and lowers his defense. Uh, it's a pretty big boost to his attack, actually. Because we stab the ground here and then hit the... Use Infinity's End. Uh, instead of doing, like, 4,900 damage, we're doing over 6,000 damage. <laughs> it's a really big boost, actually. And it's still just a little chunk off of Fat Chocobo. Yeah. Fat Chocobo has all the health. Mm-hmm. And he stays staggered for an incredibly long time. There's a lot of meat on those bones. <laughs> uh, I like also that one of his moves is just to pick up crap off the ground, so sometimes he just throws, like, traffic cones at you. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, one Popeyes franchise staying open for a whole week on Fat Chocobo. <laughs> I, uh, I don't have it personally myself, and I... I've also just been on on hiatus in Final Fantasy XIV, so this, it's such a big, long MMO that's been around for so long. But they do have fat chocobo mounts that you can ride. Ooh. I really want one of those. I'm wondering how that works. 
Because its, it's uh, primary mode of motion seems to be rolling around really fast. Uh, one of them, at least... Uh, and then it seems dangerous if you're going to be on a saddle, especially right now. Yeah. One of the fat chocobo mounts in 14, at least... Uh, it's actually flying. It's got really teeny tiny wings that is like flapping okay. very fast. That's yeah. good. I like that. I think one of the one of them is a really big fat chocobo, but it's capable of actually walking. But while you're riding it, you you have like a a fishing rod with like a big carrot that you're dangling in front of his face, so it's always running forward chasing the carrot. Very good. Very yeah. good. <laughs> Keep up the pressure, okay? Oh yeah, we just had protect protect cast on us again, even though I didn't do it. It's because of this little guy. Hey, little guy. Hey, weird cat. That's our other uh, DLC summon we haven't used yet, Carbuncle. Um, sometimes when the Moogles are throwing bombs, instead of summoning monsters to fight you, they accidentally will summon a little baby summon that helps you instead. Aww. So like Chocobo Chick and Carbuncle and the little Cactuar, sometimes they just appear to help you. It is crowded around here. You, you got a big old party. Yeah, this fight gets really chaotic. More and more Moogles show up the further in you get. Well, one of those Moogles is your friend. <laughs> oh, there's Chocobo Chick. He's helping. Hi, Chocobo Chick. <laughs> there's three different Chocobos happening right now. Look, look at how big and strong you can grow up. If, yeah, you, you are basically looking at, at a Pokemon evolution chain in this fight. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Yeah, we are. I love if you don't lock on to the fat chocobo when he's rolling around like this, he's just constantly in and out of frame. <laughs> ah, you've been betrayed by your brethren. Ah. Until next time. I like that sometimes it just says Que, just above <laughs> his name. He's not feeling it today. Well, after all that, it's pretty demoralizing. <laughs> Nothing to it. Truly amazing work, Cloud. This is incontrovertible proof that the universe has a sense of humor. <laughs> now that you have a fun Thought you already were, Chadley. <laughs> you can work together to squash Shinra like a bug. We're going to start with my immediate supervisor, Shinra Middle Manager. <laughs> crush him, Cloud, crush him. Future battle crush solutions. him with all of your mighty weight. I would like to see his eyeballs squish, <laughs> wouldn't you? Can we get all 80s anime in here and have some eyeball violence? I said this to him in our last staff meeting. He was most displeased, Mr. Cloud. <laughs> huh? You want to take me up on my offer now? Cool, then I'll see you down below. Well, the other thing I can do is get a pretty dress for this lady, so, uh, mm. yeah, I would rather risk my life. <laughs> but yeah, now that we've beaten Hell House, we can buy the souvenirs here now, which are just the stuffed animals it was shooting out of its windows. Uh, there's two, nice. di two different ones, Fuzzy Wuzzy and Mr. Cuddlesworth. Uh, sure. Yeah, they just work like grenades. They're just stronger. <laughs> they're just stronger grenades, basically. Only a few left. Get yours while you can. Only a few left because the cops are cracking down on the illegal arms trade. <laughs> I uh, we're not going to be using the, these in the arena fights. I'm actually saving each of those for a, a boss fight later on. Hey. Hey. I know we were just here, but you like want to do more? Just for the fun of it. He's really trying to angle for another high five. That's all this is. Oh no, he found a way to get one. It's his high five strategy and he doesn't know. He doesn't know any other way. A lot of hand stuff going on with Cloud today. <laughs> so some type of s symbolism I should be getting from this? I'm not sure. He, he's always wearing gloves. Yeah. He keeps his hands close to his heart. <laughs> He cannot wear his heart on his sleeve because he does not have a sleeve. Oh, man. Where's his heart on his pauldron? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think what re really for Cloud's very slow 
uh, uh, acclimation to like friendship and human intimacy, I think the next step for him is just an ungloved uh, high five. Like actual oh, skin on skin high five. Your sword looks fucking evil now, man. <laughs> it's too purple. Looks bad. <laughs> hey, been waiting for you. So, what are you in the mood to fight? There's only three fights here to do. Uh, certain fights only let you use certain party members in them. Some of them are mm -hmm. solo fights. Um, cloud versus wild animals. Oh my, is it the bandits again? Oh. There's some wild characters, I tell you what. So, I just put a triple slash and a, a shortcut, so like these beginning fights are absurdly easy. Uh, the, the Colosseum fights uh, have difficulty ratings that go from one to seven stars, so we're starting off with, you know, just one star fights. But man, triple slash is so good for these parts. Done, basically. Bye bye, Blue Goon. One of the rules for Colosseum <laughs> fights is that you cannot use items. Okay. Can't use items, but every round in a fight r restores half of your HP and MP. So for Here these parts, go. like super easy. You're essentially just getting a full heal because you're not gonna hurt get hurt that bad. For yeah. later Colosseum fights, like even getting half of your health restored Let's might go. not be enough. <laughs> The Colosseum fights in the original game had a gimmick that this one doesn't have. I'm curious if later ones will have it, where essentially after each round, uh, there'd be a slot machine minigame you had to play where you would either get a, a negative or positive effect from it. Sometimes it'd be like, if certain slots lined up, it'd be like, you can't use magic anymore for the rest of the fight, for the rest of the Colosseum fights. That would be very bad, yeah. especially if you're in one of the Aerith solo fights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these beginning fights are super easy, but you want to do them just because the reward you get from them is something you can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, Chadley's love and respect. Oh, yes. He's using you, man. He's using you. Oh, man, but I got to make him proud of me. <laughs> Chadley doesn't care about you. He says that to all the guys. He's just using you to get back at his boss. Just ask Biggs, okay? Biggs has been through the whole Chadley rigmarole. Oh no! Why didn't Biggs tell anywhere. me about him? I see you. Biggs, man, come on. You gotta do me a solid. Let me know about the problem children in Sector 7. They're out to get me. Not bad. All right, so for finishing this first fight, uh, you get a legacy, which gives you a new limit break. Ooh. Yeah. Um, you can only use, have one limit break equipped at a time, so you got to switch those around. Uh, the difference between the level one and level two limit breaks being that uh, level one limit breaks now only use half of your limit break gauge, um, so you can get to another limit break very quickly. But limit, mm -hmm. level two limit breaks use the whole gauge, but they're just way better. They're way mm -hmm. better. <laughs> You think if you do too many uh, 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 Colosseum fights, Cloud's gonna like do something to his rotator cuff just from the victory pose? Oh man, yeah. That's a big heavy sword. That's gotta fuck your shoulder up after a <laughs> while, right? Uh, oh, so I gave Aerith two materia that I basically never use on her. They're just ones that you never consider to use on her since she's like a long range magic user. Uh, I yeah. gave her deadly dodge and the parry materia. So the uh, <laughs> yeah, fuck those rats. The parry materia gives her like a little short uh, like dash that also hurts enemies. It's fun to use. So yeah, that dodge, that uh, parry dash, also counts as a block. So you can dash into enemies about to attack you and take a lot less damage from it while hurting them. Uh -huh. The parry dash is also, it can f make weaker enemies flinch. So like if an enemy is about to attack you and you dash into them, it'll just cancel their attack out. Nice. Yeah. Get him! And Aerith's deadly dodge do. is, uh, is actually kind of handy. So basically if you dodge and then attack right after afterwards, um, she will do a uh, attack 
she will fire off her normal like magic orbs, but it will always be a multi-target attack. Huh. So if you just keep dodging over and over, you will just constantly hit all the enemies near you with magic orbs. <laughs> I'll destroy them with orbs. <laughs> The only like downside to the deadly dodge attack is that it's really short range. So if you do that when you're far away, the orbs just don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You won't hit anybody with them. Thank you. But yeah, there's something I haven't really brought up. Yet this it's it's something we're gonna talk about later in the game, but I haven't really talked about like the the creators behind Final Fantasy VII. Go on, I'd keep my distance if I were you. There, there's several names. What one of the Enjoy ones life? people know the most now is probably Tetsuya Nomura, so also mm -hmm. the creator of Kingdom Hearts. Um, if there's ever a Square Enix game that comes out that has his name anywhere in the credits, and there's even a single aspect people don't like about the game, he's the one that takes the blame for it. That's how it tends to go. Yeah, that's usually how it goes with video games, of course. I'm happy to be that person in our projects. I, I'll take that. <laughs> oh, no. Just, just go away. Yeah, there's certain aspects that people, you know, certain people aren't happy with the remake, this first remake, either because, like, ah, if it, you know, it's more than one game, or, ah, they changed things slightly around or added a new character like Roche or something, and that's a big no-no for a certain segment of the fan base. Mm -hmm. And Tetsuya Nomura is the one who gets the blame for all that shit, also partially just because he's the person who writes all the Kingdom Hearts games, and the, the writing in those games can be just... It's trash. <laughs> it's, it's just like deviant art, hot topic, dumb trash. Um, I enjoy how unique and weird and bizarre it is, but it's not good, I can say. Uh, and so if there's any story things in this game that people don't like, he's the one who receives the blame for it, even when it's been explicitly stated in interviews that it was not his idea. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm going to have a lot more to say about that by the time we get to the, the end of this. But just know that he's not the only writer. <laughs> the original writer of Seven worked on this game. Like, a lot of mm -hmm. the original uh, producers and directors and stuff from that game came back for this game. Now, who do we credit slash blame for Hell House? Hmm. Well, mm. clearly not Nomura, because it's good. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Uh, I am going to be... Uh, a thing I never see on the internet, which is the Tetsuya Nomura Defender. <laughs> Y'all can fuck off with your Tetsuya Nomura criticism, because half the fucking time it isn't even something he did. Mm -hmm. And half the time, even if his writing is bad, he's like a good ideas guy, because there's like a, uh, there's a Polygon article slash book out there detailing like the production of seven like with interviews from people who worked on it right right and there are several stories with like nomura and nojima the guy who like wrote the story um of the original game where it's just like oh yeah we were just like hanging out in our office talking about like what's gonna happen at a certain point in the game and nojima said this and it's like a really bad idea and nomura's just like what if we did this instead and then nojima wrote that out instead and it was like you know the thing people like love and hold near and dear from the original game mm -hmm. one of the ideas no uh nomura like canceled was like hey so in the original game when you're like Going to the penultimate go. dungeon of the game, you have to choose the three the three people in your party, and you know what? What if everybody you don't choose dies immediately <laughs> afterwards? And Nomura was just like, "Let's not do that." <laughs> but there, there's a bunch. There's other examples of that shit too. But yeah, later on, buckle your seatbelts people who I know in the comments are going to bitch about one specific fucking thing. I'm the person who's going to come in with the, the, the hot take of that is actually good. So don't you dare sit here this entire time thinking I'm going to be on your side with this. I'm not. <laughs> Look, we all know that these games that take thousands and thousands of hours of work and mm -hmm. have, you know, 20 minutes worth of credits can be boiled down to one person's creative vision. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone knows this. Like, I can say 
as someone working on a AAA game right now, which I know everyone in the comments was already like, is it okay that he said he's working on a new Saints Row? Yes, it's literally already got, like, confirmed publicly. Don't boss me. <laughs> Don't boss me! I know the rules! Um, he has actual bosses for that. I have actual bosses who, and, and like, approved, you know, guidance from my friend who is the social media manager of Volition on, like, what is okay and not okay to say. Um, <laughs> But like, yeah, even when there's like people in games credited for doing certain things, you know, this is their role in the project. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes in games development where it's just like, oh, I'm hanging out with my friend who is a writer or a modeler or an animator. And we were just fucking around talking about wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And through mm -hmm. that, you know, collaboration, something made it into the final game. And it's just like, you know what? Some dude who's a video editor or somebody else suggested that. It's not credited that way, you know? <laughs> so, like, writing ideas from games can come from people who aren't even actual writers. They're, you know, an audio person mm -hmm. or whatever. That isn't to say that I actually have contributed to writing at all. I haven't. I am way too busy with my own stuff already. All I'm gonna say is that if the video editing in Saints Row isn't fucking choice, <laughs> somebody's gonna find this, this conversation oh, man. and dream your ass. Look, all I can say is that the majority of my public-facing work for the games I work on is for marketing materials. Uh, like, I do have stuff that makes it into the games. It's usually more for utility rather than direction, you know? <laughs> it's like, hey, we need a cutscene that conveys something to the player so that they understand a goal in the mission or something, or they're aware, you know, an enemy has arrived. And it's it's my duty to basically just capture that and make sure that is conveyed in a way that is understandable. Come back anytime you want to fight. <laughs> I am not a cutscene director. Anyways, that's the arena fights. What's a um, clarity pendant do? <laughs> So a clarity pendant, uh, we, we have that refocus material that lets you, you know, you, you use that limit break and you get uh, three, three bars in your gauge. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have that equipped, uh, it will also automatically fill all three of your gauges the instant you use the limit break. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, yeah, really useful if you want to uh, have a full triple gauge from the get-go. And yeah, the other uh, solo fight with Aerith, she also got uh, her, limit two, her level two limit break. It'll be a little bit before we can show those off, but mm -hmm. they're good. Are all these people perspective fighters? I don't or are know. they just like in the lobby getting popcorn I think during just, intermission? Yeah, I think they're just getting popcorn. I like that this Col underground coliseum is just like a tourist attraction on the main road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not even like a seedy thing. It's just, hey, do you want to buy tickets for the live stamp show? Or do you want to buy tickets for the place where people fight mutant dogs in a hell house? Chadley. Chadley. They, they've got uh, flyers in all of these sold out, no vacancy hotels right in the lobby. I've yeah. done it. I've developed a new materia. Right next to the zoo. <laughs> the Railroad Museum. Ooh. Uh, so we got the ATB stagger materia here. Uh, if you have this equipped and you stagger an enemy, it makes your ATB gauge uh, get a little boost. Ooh. There's, a, there's a bunch of materia that, like, if you equip all of them and combine them together, it's just, like, you might not have a lot of spells or extra abilities, but you'll just have a build made out where if you do anything, your ATB gauge is just constantly getting boosted <laughs> by different actions you're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's like four or five different ones that are just different ways of making your gauge or other people's gauges get boosted. Okay, Batman, <laughs> fuck you. You're also right below the uh, the cowboy hostess don't bar. Don't talk about the cowboy hostess bar. <laughs> I don't like the cowboy hostess bar. Oh, the squeeze squeeze and the moo moo. I wonder which one costs more. I've, my guess, without saying what I think it entails, is the moo moo. <laughs> so juicy. Look, I'm just here for hand stuff. I'm just here for hand stuff. I don't need the moo moo. Now, is the squeeze squeeze something that applies to the hand? Because then, sure, yeah. Hmm? I mean, yeah. It's a heartache waiting to happen, but. You hear about the new Merc? They say. That guy is eating and describing that bun like it's a hamburger. Mm hmm. 
It's a hamburger bun. Hmm. It never had a, a cheeseburger bow? Go for it. It's good stuff. Hmm. I bet it could work. All right, don't yell at me. I have the money. Hey. <laughs> I did the fighting. <laughs> you wanted me to do fighting. I did extra fighting. You're here. Good. I have everything I need to get started. Just one thing before we do. You're the Cloud, right? Cloud the Merc. I'm told you did a wonderful job helping the people of Sector 5. <laughs> you have a very impressive work ethic. It's like they say, good things come to those who work. What goes around comes around, and in ways that might surprise you. <laughs> I'm gonna put Aerith in the most gorgeous dress you've ever seen. <laughs> It'll be a real jaw-dropper. All right, now that that's out of the way, once you change, you won't be able to leave town. Are you sure you're ready? All right then, let's get started. Beauty takes a lot of work and preparation. Far more than you'd know. In the meantime, let me see, let me think. There ought to be things you can only do without your friend. Now's your chance to get out and have some fun. <laughs> I can tell you're already beginning to feel at home here. Though being so new to it, I assumed you still wouldn't know how to enjoy yourself properly. <laughs> so I went and had a chat with Sam. He said he'd be happy to help you out. Hey, no one asked you to do that. But there's so much you don't know. This is the perfect opportunity for you to learn the ways of the world and man the hell up. And that's enough of that. Aerith, come with me. Oh boy, I can't wait to see the dress. The dress is part of it, sure. But we'll also need to do something about that plain Jane makeup and hairdo. This is gonna take some work. Ouch. Well, I'll see you later, Cloud. Peek, and I'll poke out your eyes. That I told you. No peeking. You have a lot of nerve. How old are you? Emotionally or physically? There's a difference. Why are you trying to knock on a curtain, you weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, a couple things here change based on how we've been playing stuff so far. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she remarked about how, you know, Cloud has a reputation for helping out the people in Sector uh, Sector 5. The dress that Aerith gets is, part, is dependent on how many side quests you did back in Sector 5. <laughs> hey, you think that guy's doing okay? He wasn't looking so hot, you know. Maybe we should go check on him? But this street, isn't it... The one that everyone says is bad news? Shit, you're right. I don't want to go down there now. Does every sector have a bad street? Apparently. The last one's bad street was just where kids like to play in, with, you know, rusty equipment. <laughs> it wasn't so bad in the end yeah. for, you know, anyone but them. Yeah, the the tight Aerith can get three different dress, dresses. Dresses. dresses? Dre Aerith hmm? dresses. Hey, bro! This ain't no place to hang out, you feel me? Ain't nobody gonna give a shit if you get your throat cut here. Oh, my stomach. If you keep going, this is gonna start sounding less like you're really sick and more like, I don't know. Some hand stuff is going on back here or something. <laughs> Don't sully hand stuff by associating it with that man's butt noises. <laughs> you okay? What happened with you know what? It's all taken care of. You know what happened with you know what? That's why it's called that. Spotted by a tourist. Then you best see to that. No, I don't know what with you know what. Aren't you a curious cat walking dark alleys? 
You've got balls, so I'll give you a pass. This once. You didn't see or hear anything. You get me? Oh, kid. I know you're not telling me to move. I'll let it slide tonight. Now beat it. Is the chest the you-know-what? Because then I understand, but if it's not the you-know-what, then I want the you-know-what. What if it's a Moogle medal? <laughs> My, what lovely weather we're having! This man sounds like he's in the middle of becoming Joker-fied. I'm gonna leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> By the weather, of all things. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen that one happen before. It's been raining for eight days, and I'm tired of pretending it's not. <laughs> so, Man of M sent us off to go do some stuff for uh, Chocobo Sam. Uh, yeah. Depending on the choices we've made throughout Walmart so far, we can actually ha get assigned to do tasks for Madam M instead of Sam. Walmart is just a big old flowchart with a, a coliseum in the middle, huh? Yeah. Howdy. Madam M said you'd be swinging by. Let me see if I've got this straight. You ditched your lady friend and fellow champion to have a boys' night out in Wall Market? Uh. Kidding. If I know the madam, and I do, this was all her idea. I can see why. There's no denying you're skilled with a sword. But when it comes to damn near anything else, well, can't help but have my doubts. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But then there's nothing wrong with expanding your horizons, neither. Seeking new experiences. Knowing the ways of this here world will help you to better protect her while you're in it. Reckon I got a few solid gigs for you. What do you say? You game? Huh. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> That's the spirit. You have yourself a grand time tonight, Mr. Merck. Depending on what you do, it's either Sam or Madam M that gives you side quests to do. Uh, so there's a little, like, split here where mm -hmm. you can get different side quests on different playthroughs. Um, there's a total of five side quests. There's one shared side quest between them, but uh, other than that, uh, there are two side quests unique to like each path you take. Burning Thighs. <laughs> Burning Thighs. Burning Thighs is the one that's shared between both side quest uh, branches. <laughs> so no matter what, we're, go we're about to do that one. You cannot beat this game without burning thighs. It's true. What kind of tourist just shows up and says, hey, where's the shady places? <laughs> I want to die tonight. I want to get real fucked up. I just took a shitload of drugs. I'm here to do some extreme people watching. Look, a Type 60 tank and Rocket 13. I really like the cover art for Under the Rotting Pizza. Oh man, I want to be Under the Rotting Pizza. Yeah. That's my kind of shady place. Yeah. Now, is a rotting pizza just a rotting pizza, or is it just the name of a type of pizza? Maybe it's something that's like extra burnt. <laughs> Got some weird toppings on it. Oh my god, Sam. Just look at my skin and my waistline. That's just what happens to everyone who works in this town. Yeah, I'm feeling it too. My shoulder hurts a lot from swinging my big sword. Am I right, ladies? Ladies? Just don't, don't mention the squeeze squeeze. <laughs> the, or the, yeah. You're off the clock. Like, are, are, you, are one of you the lady that was really frustrated that their customer just didn't know shit about trains? <laughs> I got some kids I could hook you up with if you want to talk trains. It's like the worst remake of Milk Money. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, we were we visited the weapon shop last episode, and there is the the owner chilling out on the top of a, a tank turret, mm -hmm. and there was some employees talking about how the weapon shop owner and and his co-owner, the brother, got into like a fight over a tank. They split the tank in half. <laughs> so the, the other owner is just there chilling on top of the bottom part of the tank that he got to keep. So good. 
that's a that's an I love that that's an expansion as well of the original because before mm -hmm. it was just hey there's a guy sitting on top of a tank turret in the original game and they made a fucking little story out of that. <laughs> it, it's when you know drawing a chalk line down the center of the tank doesn't quite do the job. Yeah. All right, burning thighs. Well, we've seen a lot of the city at this point. There's a lot of buildings we can go into now. Never seen you before. <laughs> Here to work out? Put some muscle on that bony frame of yours? Cloud, been waiting for you to show up. Thanks for coming, and welcome to our humble training hall. Jules, head trainer. If you've got some time to spare, how about a little bit of fun? Wanna try taking on one of our guys? <laughs> You're not serious, are you? Look at him! He's a scrawny little thing. I could snap him like a twig. Now, now. I wouldn't judge this one by his muscle mass. What do you say, Cloud? If you want to give it a go, just let me know. I love the guy in the right arm tattoo that just says, Man Among Men. Mm -hmm. He sure is. <laughs> Look at all these men he's among. So this is a... Final Fantasy VII had uh, just a lot of people doing squats throughout the original game for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's coming back in full force. I love the pause when you're trying to figure out how to uh, introduce a thought. <laughs> uh, mm, there's a lot of squats in this game. A lot of squats. <laughs> many, many manly squats t that happen throughout Seven. I guess it was just one uh, animation that could read really cleanly in the little Lego men. Yeah, I, I think that's partially it, yeah. They use the squatting animation a lot as a, a way to indicate excitement as well. Uh, if somebody got excited, they would just start squatting a bunch while talking. I enjoy that a lot of these men are working out in uh, just their normal day clothes. Mm -hmm. Just got done it, with... It's the slums, after all. You think they can go to Lululemon or whatever the fuck? Come on. Yeah. That place sucks anyway. Nobody should go there. <laughs> Maybe a lot of these guys are inspired by watching dudes fight at the Coliseum. They just go straight to the gym that's nearby. Yes. Yes. That's how they make them get a lot of memberships, I bet. So, you up or around? Ha! You're taking me on? You look like a dried up old terpsichord left out in the sun. You got no idea what you're getting into, little man. All right, enough talk. We'll settle this the tried and true traditional way. A squat off. Now, let's all see what you've got. Now don't go cry. All right, so it's time for the squatting minigame. Uh, this is a minigame straight from the original. They tweak the mechanics a little bit, but it's very similar, actually. But yeah, you just gotta gotta do these buttons in rhythm. Yeah. Hard mode is uh, when he leaves the sword on for the extra weight. Oh shit! But yeah, the buttons fade away after a while. So you don't have to have like perfect timing. Like if the cursor goes to the next button, it's not like you have to press it as it touches it or you fuck up. Um, mm -hmm. Cloud will just pause in the next like position in the squat until you press the button. <laughs> so his his animation is telling you when the button is available. Yeah, whenever he freezes, it's like okay, time to go to the next button. Every successful squat, the next one gets a little faster. Eventually, he looks like a real animation. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you really don't want to screw up though, because on top of it just making you fall over like that and it takes a while for you to start squatting again, it resets your squat speed. Oh no! Yeah. Like so. Was never in doubt. Damn. Annihilated him. Dad, that's embarrassing, Ronnie. Ah, how? How the hell did I lose to this scrawny little kid who looks like he doesn't even consume his daily recommended amount of protein? Ronnie, you know it's all about quality, not mass. You're too quick to judge people by their build. That and your overtrained ego are the main reasons you lost to our bold challenger here. 
Thanks for helping me teach my boys a valuable lesson. And sorry for dragging you into it. Cloud? We're all one big family here at this gym. And now you're part of it. If you're ever up for training, our doors are always open to you. Let's work together to maintain healthy minds and bodies. This is a gym that has zero women, but would put up a sign that says respect women. Absolutely. These guys remind me a lot of the uh, fitness club from Mob Psycho 100. <laughs> They're very much like those guys. You want to go, do you? All right, then bring it on. Yeah, we got two more uh, dudes to challenge here for more prizes. You can back out if you're scared. Oh, this guy means business. He's uh -huh. reinforced his knees. Your form's looking good. Oh, wow. That disappeared fast. Yeah. Really fast. And uh, there's an additional mechanic uh, where Cloud will start getting tired and you have to mash a button to get him through the next squat. <laughs> it is nice that it makes the, uh, the button prompts reappear just briefly in case you were starting to forget or something but uh, yeah this guy isn't too difficult either later uh, oh yeah this is the the squatting me game in the original you were it was a very similar thing of like you know pressing the buttons waiting for clouds animation to uh, you know get to the next step before you press the button but just more 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 presentation built around this minigame now. I like the original's man on the mat better than this this image. I agree. I, I I'm sad that this one isn't quite the same as the original. I really like that that drawing the original map had. I love that um so Jules, who is, you know, yes. commentating on this stuff, he's triggered by every time you squat, so if you're squatting too fast, he says stuff faster than he can finish the sentence. <laughs> His voice clips just start overlapping each other. No! Is that it? No! That's how he trains his tongue, one of the most important muscles. <laughs> you did it. You really beat me. You gotta be in incredible shape. <laughs> it's unfair that you guys are having all the fun. What do you say? May I have this squat? <laughs> 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 you up for some exercise? So yeah, the previous rewards we got were uh, three mega potions and another luck up materia. Okay, let's uh, have some we win luck. this one, we get a champion belt. Ooh. So Jules is actually kind of hard. Uh, he's just—he looks like a hard guy. <laughs> he's just you are at the start. He is just faster than you at squats. Whoa. I got lucky and he fell over fucking four squats in, but uh... Yeah, what is the... is, is that just random chance? I like, think your different opponent opponents have like a different chance that they can fall down, because it's never like the same squat they fall over. Mm -hmm. Jules is just less likely to fall over and he's faster. Yeah, even though, like, we have an edge on him already, like, if Cloud falls over just once, Jules will, like, easily get ahead of you. Um, you cannot, you can fall over maybe once or twice in this before it's just, you're not gonna win, because Jules is just too fast. <laughs> You can do it, Jules. Yeah, if you are able to chain like over 40 squats, yeah, it, class animation just looks normal now. <laughs> and you, you're going deeper than Jules, too. You're really shaming him. Yeah, I'm, I'm going low to the ground here. I've got some turbo gonna, squats. Gonna, that's why you're wearing gloves, so you don't scuff your hands. Yeah. Also, I really love the squat version of the battle theme. <laughs> it's good. Nothing to it. One of them said, who'd have thought it'd be this close, and you shamed their leader by 20 squats. <laughs> I had no idea how strong you really were. You truly are something, aren't you? Listen up, everyone. We can be stronger, better. Let's hit those weights. You got it, Jules! By being defeated by Cloud, I retire and pass the torch onto Cloud. He is your new master. 
wow, this place is going to be a lot less friendly. <laughs> yeah. So we got a big wrestling style champion belt. Uh, wearing yes. it, wearing it increases your max HP by 10% and your strength by 5%. Pretty decent. But if you don't want this, you can sell it for 5,000 gil. Wow. It sells, yeah, it sells for a shitload of money. You can get like a small down payment on a dress for that. <laughs> the world's best dress. 